prospect heavy show today which you know warranted because here comes the sabers prospect challenge my five under the radar saber prospects i'm gonna cheat a little bit though because only four of them you're gonna see at the prospects challenge but there is one other that this week me and i think others in the saber community are figuring out sabers might have a diamond in the rough playing overseas right now that could be an impact player one day for the Sabres. We'll let you know who that is and who to look for at the Prospects Challenge coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. That includes our YouTube channel, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Thank you, Jody Biasi, coming to you on today's show. If you want to reach out to the show, you can do that by heading up our text line. Join subtext com slash locked on sabers where you can sign up be sure to follow us on twitter at locked on sabers we are coming to you on a thursday thanks for joining us on a buffalo bills game day so you know we got our hardcore listeners that are talking some hockey today uh, of course you could check out the locked on bills podcast with joe marino if you're listening to the show before bills and dolphins he's got the preview of the game for you and if you're listening tomorrow which would be on friday then you could check out his post game reactions to the bills and the dolphins getting to the sabers though this week, tomorrow, will be the beginning of the Prospects Challenge where the Sabres will take on the Columbus Blue Jackets at Harbor Center. Uh, all of those games, by the way, you can listen to on WGR and you can watch on Sabres.com. Or you could buy a ticket. This is, I kind of joked about yesterday. I can't believe it's 12 bucks, but you could go down to Harbor Center and check out the games live in person if you want to get out of this 85-degree weather. Although, I don't know why you'd want to because this is probably the last week we're going to have here in Buffalo of, uh, of some cool weather here. So, I got on today's show for you five under-the-radar prospects for the Buffalo Sabres, four of which you're going to see at the Prospects Challenge. All five... None of the five, I should say, were first-round picks of the Buffalo Sabres. So on yesterday's show, talked a little bit about their first-round picks. I think it's a big tournament and the beginning of a big fall here for Isak Roseanne and his journey to becoming an NHL player. If it doesn't happen now, I'm questioning whether it ever will. Talked about Noah Oslin a little bit, but today we're going to get into the under-the-radar guys that are not first-round prospects, uh, guys that were not drafted in the first round. So let's get right into it. And let's, by the way, no Peyton Krebs contract to update you on. We are uh, here on September 12th and we still do not have a Peyton Krebs contract. I might want to guess we don't have one by the time training camp shows up uh, at this point in time. Uh, so anyways, the prospects. All right. Prospects challenge coming. Who are the guys to look out for, to learn more about? If you're looking to figure out like, Hey, maybe who's the next J.J. Paterka, right? Sabres have not had many of these when it comes to diamonds in the rough that they have found outside of the first round. There was a long stretch there during the drought where there was nobody outside of the first round that the Sabres had drafted and developed. It was like Victor Olofsson, and that was it for like a five, six, seven-year period. But in recent time, you've got some pretty nice development for a bunch of guys. Uka Pekalukinen was a second round pick that is now on to his second contract and is developed into the Sabres number one goaltender. Matias Samuelson was a second round pick who's on his second contract and has developed into a decent top four defensive defenseman. JJ Paterka was a second round pick that I think is about to be on to his second contract after this year and might be a top line player in the National Hockey League. So. And honestly, there are some other guys more recently you'll see in today's show. I think that process, I think that trend is going to continue of the Sabres every couple of years, maybe once a year. You know, you got five picks outside the first round, six, seven picks sometimes. I mean, recently they've even had as many as nine outside of the first round that 
one a year. Go one for seven every year outside the first round with a good player. And that's that's okay. That draft class where Lukanen goes in the second round. All right, middle stat was the first round pick, right? So then it goes Marcus Davidson in the second round at 37 overall. Nothing. Not not in the league, never will make the league. Lynn Lukanen. Then Oscari Laxon in the third round, never going to make the league. Jacob Bryson in the fourth round, who's a tweener, uh, someone that I actually kind of like to make the Sabres top six, but he's an AHL slash NHL guy right in the middle. So hardly an impact player. And then Linus Weisback, seventh rounder, who I don't think is ever going to make the league either. So I've got one, two, three, four, five picks outside the first round of 2017. They hit on one of the five. Fine. That, that works out. I'm good with that. I think you'll find that most people would be good with that. Uh, the next year, after that, Darlene goes in the first round. Then, how many picks do the Sabres have outside the first round? They had five. Samuelson at 32 overall. Then, Matej Picar, Lindis, Lindstrom, Kronholm. That's one person. Uh, then, Miska Kukinen and William Warge Crew. They really went tough with the names in that draft class. Uh, one for five. Oh, fine. Perfectly okay. Perfectly okay. Uh, if you do that, then I think you're going to get away with it. Maybe recently they'll even have more than one, but I think you're going to have at least one guy in each of these draft classes that have not yet made it to the NHL level. Let's start with the guy you're not going to see at the Prospects Challenge. The guy, though, that the niche, little niche, dark corner of Twitter, of Sabres Twitter, that is dedicated to the Prospects. I think you're seeing a lot of hype recently. And by the way, that's not always just like this little niche in the corner. Like you've got your your big guns like Chris Baker and others who are bringing it to the forefront if you're not noticing. I've got some buddies that are big prospect guys uh, and they've noticed that Prokhor Poltapov has emerged in the KHL this year. The, this is the Sabres' second round pick, their first second round pick in 2021, 33rd overall. So it went Owen Power, number one, Isaac Roseanne, number 14, Prokhor Poltapov, number 33. And then Kisikov, Sardarian, Bloom, bunch of guys after that. But Poltapov was their third pick, 33rd overall, so almost the first round. Like two picks after the first round ended. He has begun this season in the KHL for CSKA uh, Petersburg, and he has been unbelievable in his first three games for CSKA seven points in three games. And if you have caught any of the highlights, there's some nice ones. He is a great puck handler. He looks like a great playmaker. He is not really the fastest guy in the world to my eye, but he's skilled. He is defensive. Apparently, I'm going to assume that is true because, one, I read Chris Baker say it, and two, he scored a shorthanded goal the other day. To score shorthanded goals as a 21-year-old, even in the KHL, you, I think, got to be pretty good defensively. He was being trusted in that situation, and then he blocked a shot and came down on a breakaway, went a little uh, forehand, backhand, back to the forehand, and then he slid it between the five hole for the breakaway goal. There were a couple of really other nice, impressive plays in this game he had the other day where he kind of spins around, finds a guy in the slot for a nice opportunity. There was another one where he kind of came down below the goal line and found a guy coming down um, from behind him. The vision was on display. Poltapov, okay. So this was well, that draft class where the Sabres took a lot of flyers on a bunch of Russian prospects. They hadn't drafted a lot of Russian prospects in a long time. It was like one guy in over 10 years. And then 2021, they draft Poltapov, Kisikov, Sardarian. They draft uh, Novikov in the sixth round. Four Russian prospects in one draft class. And usually what you get with that is some baked-in risk to get a better prospect. Generally, what you're going to say is, all right, these guys are probably better than where they're being drafted, but I have to price them there as a prospect because I don't know if they're ever going to come over to the NHL. And I, especially now, the way the world is politically with the Russian invasion of Ukraine and that war still going on and 
Vladimir Putin just being a joke on the world stage, but being a, a monster on the world stage, you, you, there's no there's no communication any longer. It doesn't sound like, or it's tougher between the Sabres and any of their prospects that are currently playing in Russia. You just don't, there's a, there's a wall there when it comes to development. So you kind of have to just cross your fingers, hope that everything's going okay over there. Hope that they're developing him in the way you want, getting him the ice time the way you want. You can't really do anything about where he's playing. Um, you just have to cross your fingers and hope that one day he's going to come over. So Poltapov, all right. I don't know. I kind of make it sound like, and I think this is appropriate, that he would have been a back-end first-round pick if he were someone that was going to be playing his junior hockey over in Canada as opposed to in Russia. So, And that's not resolved, by the way. He's playing right now in Russia. He is playing, uh, by the, I misspoke, not CSK Petersburg, CSK Moscow, who he's playing for. So he's playing in Moscow right now. His contract does expire at the end of this season. So you'd like to hope that after this year, the Sabres are going to get him over. And it's lining up a little perfect for me because Poltapov was seven points in three games, which by the way, that's a pace. He won't make this pace, but it, that's a pace this year in the KHL of 158 points in 68 games. Again, it's not going to happen to that extent, but maybe he's about to become a star player over in the KHL. And if that happens, it times out perfect because a lot of those Russian prospects, when it's time to decide, do I want to stay in Russia or do I want at, in, at home, play for my hometown team maybe, although I don't think Poltapov is from Moscow. Uh, he's from, he, that's where I got confused. He's from St. Petersburg, but he's playing for Moscow. Um, he could, he'll have a decision to make. Do you want to stay in Russia or do you want to come over to North America? And if the Sabres have to play the convincing game at all, the recruiting game, like these are the reasons why you should come over. You might have a better chance of convincing him to come over. If you tell him you've got a great shot of making the NHL club. Well, so far he had no business being told that because in his previous two seasons for CSK Moscow in the KHL not the VHL not the MHL these other like lower level russian leagues in the KHL in the last two years Poltapov had 13 points in 56 games and 10 points in 56 games so hadn't warranted a look in the NHL at all but let him go have a star season in the KHL a, a great season a point a game season and then I think the Sabres can more appropriately say to him, listen, you got a great shot of making the team out of camp. You come here, you're a star player in the KHL, we'll give you the look. Versus before, it, if, like, if his contract expired after last year, it would be, yeah, we'll bring you over and you'll go to Rochester. Like There'd be no debating that. You uh, absolutely would be going to Rochester. Now, if his play warrants a look at the NHL club, maybe that gives a, a better chance uh, because if he might say, well, I'm not coming over for the AHL, and then he never comes over. But if he develops right and he plays well in the KHL, maybe you're more likely to get him over here. But I see a playmaker. I see a potential top six winger. I My, my mind starts to wander to, man, did they get lucky here and get another J.J. Paterka level player in the second round? Both of those guys were really high second round picks. Is that what happened here? Did the Sabres... Get, get another Paterka because, man, put another Paterka on this roster next year. And now, now we're really talking about a solidified top six for years and years to come. Um, although you're, I guess with you already have that if Benson gets there, but another guy, another guy would just be great to have. Um, I refrain from mentioning this name, but I just want to throw it out there because it's not a fair expectation at all, at all, at all. But let me just, connect some dots here. I've got a Russian prospect that's starting to light the lamp in the KHL. That was a second round pick that maybe not the best skater, but great hands, great vision, great playmaker, actually pretty good defensively. Six, seven traits that I just described to you. Uh, maybe it was more like four or five just expanded upon. Who's that sound like? It kind of sounds a little bit like Nikita Kucherov. I'm just saying, I'm not saying he's going to be Nikita Kucherov. Let me be very, very clear about that. But 
there are some similarities. Just saying, and you know, once every hundred times you draft a guy like that, he'll become Nikita Kucherov. Uh, Kucherov, by the way, all right, we'll go down this road just a little bit here with Poltapov. Kucherov, ah, Kuch, no, Kucherov came over. No, that's that's not that's not a good one because the, ignore the KHL part. Really, the only similarities are second round pick and maybe a little bit of their play style is very is similar. But Kucherov, I, I forgot, had come over. He started his development in Russia. Then he came and played in the QMJHL before getting a chance with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So it the where they played their junior hockey is definitely different. So keep an eye on Prokhor Poltapov. We'll keep you updated on his season. But so far, more than, uh, more than two points a game in his first three games over there. All right, when we come back, Two forward prospects and two defensive prospects to keep an eye on at the prospects challenge that are not the big name first round pick guys. That's coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. We are presented here on the show by FanDuel Sportsbook. All right, go check out those Bills odds. Go check out any of those prop bets that you might like. I mean, Josh Allen against the Dolphins, 246 and a half is the over under. He's got a five game streak in a row of throwing for 300 yards. So keep an eye on FanDuel. You've got all your hockey futures that are coming out right now. Check out the Sabres odds to win the division, maybe just to make the playoffs. You've heard us talk about FanDuel a lot, America's number one sports book, but it's we got a little something different for you today. So now through September 22nd, so for the next 10 days, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. And if that's not enough, be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all of Sunday, September 15th. Pre-game Moneyline Bats Profit Boost will be live starting tonight. View your account page now to learn more about your boost. Visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. If you're looking for more of a broader NHL preview, be sure to check out Locked on NHL. I'll be doing a roundtable, by the way, so keep an eye on this for next week. A roundtable with the guys from Locked on Senators, Locked on Red Wings, Locked on uh, uh, Canadiens. And that's it. Us four. Uh, Yeah. All the, you know. The guys that are down in the dumps. We're going to get together and talk about our teams that can't catch the top four teams. All right. Prospects Challenge starts tomorrow. Who are some of the the under-the-radar guys to keep an eye on coming up at the Prospects Challenge? Let's start in the forward ranks. We already talked about Poltapov, someone that won't be there, currently playing over in Russia. How about another Sabres second-round pick from last year? Another Sabres second-round pick that already is starting to see some signs of NHL level development, a guy that you might project right now. I might want to say he's a coin flip. That's pretty good though. Second round pick is not a coin flip to make the NHL. It's a lot less than that. Generally, I think it's more like I'm trying to remember the number of the top of my head. It's like 18% to be a regular NHL player. Uh, this guy might be getting closer to like, uh, it's a coin flip that he's going to be a, a saber someday. And that is Anton Wahlberg, six foot three. To double check they didn't he didn't grow an inch in the last year. Six foot three, 19 years old, from Sweden, left shot centerman that the Sabres picked 39th overall last year. This player showed up last year after finishing his season in Sweden in Melmo in the SHL, the men's league, the big league over in Sweden, where he had Five goals, five assists, 10 assist, 10 points in 43 games in the SHL. That, by the way, was following a World Junior Tournament that was actually pretty good. Offensively, didn't put up a ton, but three points in seven games. So, all right. This guy, though, Wahlberg, you're probably going to think he's someone that more the size, the defensive ability, someone that's going to be more of a bottom six center in the National Hockey League if he were to arrive within the next couple of years. Is there more growth to come, though, in his offensive game? He did have four points in nine games for the Amherst, and he had one goal in five playoff games. So I'm a little curious to see if there's any more growth offensively for Anton Wahlberg. But how good does he look defensively? Does he look like someone that can make the league just on that? Because, again, I it's a it's a question at least right now, if not even a likelihood, that he's not going to be able to score at a rate 
that will get him to the league on that alone. He's going to have to do the other stuff. He's going to have to be big and physical. You know, I uh, when I hear big, physical, defensive, uh, centerman, bottom six guy for the Buffalo Sabres, Paul Gostad comes to mind. All right, get get good at get great at faceoffs. Be able to chip the puck in the back of the net here once in a while. Be physical. Be a defensive shutdown guy. And there's a role for you on this team. One that is not figured out for the future. The Sabres have a lot of guys under contract and have a lot of things figured out. I think Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, like they've, and you've got Paterka. You've got a lot of your top six scorers already. Like, you know who that's going to be. Zach Benson will be thrown into that mix, I think. But the bottom six, like right now, they're piecing it together. The tough to play against, the playing better in your own zone. Sam Lafferty being signed. Like they're kind of piecing it together. Peyton Krebs might not be a part of the organization uh, for much longer. I don't know. Who is their defensive shutdown guy, bottom six center, in two, three, four years? I don't know who that answer is. There's a very good chance, though, that Anton Wahlberg could throw his name in that ring. So we'll see what we get from him. He's going to be one of the biggest players out there on the ice. How do the Sabres deploy him? These are real games, right, against other teams' prospects. So when it's three to two Sabre prospects over devil prospects, is Wahlberg the guy going out there to take that face off with under a minute to go? Is Wahlberg the guy that is shutting down the other team's top line? Those are the things I'm going to be looking out for, for from him in this tournament. And then what he does in Rochester this year. Other forward prospect, Victor Nuchev is the next name to talk about here ahead of the Prospects Challenge. He is one year older, 20 years old, was a third round pick of the Sabres, 74th overall in 2022. Six foot two, um, 165 pounds, very, very light. That might be an outdated weight, though. I'd love to see what the Sabres have actually on that. Do they have it listed? They do. Okay, so the uh, 171. All right, so he's gained six pounds since uh, his last uh, weigh-in, at least on the site I'm looking at. So, Victor Nuchev, this is a this is an elite shot, right? A player that plays a little bit more north south um, is you know someone that I try not to just immediately think, oh, this is Victor Olofsson 2.0, a guy that can shoot the puck and not do a lot else. I'd like to hope that there's more with this player because Olofsson, there was never going to be more tools. I mean, he was a seventh round pick for a reason. Nuchev, third round pick. All right, so like it's better, it's a lot better. Um, but is he? somebody that can develop more of a well-rounded offensive game. That's the thing to watch for for him. I don't have any question of whether he could shoot the puck. He could shoot the puck. Last year, by the way, 11 goals, 17 assists. That's 28 points uh, in the AHL. One assist in two playoff games. I want to see from Victor Nuchev how well-rounded is the offensive game. I'm still trying to figure that out personally, but I know he could shoot. What more does he have beyond just the finishing ability? If he's a great finisher, he could have a role in the Sabres someday. But to be an impact player, uh, I think he's going to have to develop more than that. When we come back, two Sabre defensemen to keep an eye on at the Prospects Challenge and uh, names to know for going forward. That's coming up here in the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We are presented here by Game Time. Check out the Game Time app. You got preseason action coming up. You've got a lot of football games to check out. And Game Time's got a new feature called Game Time Picks. That makes getting tickets for your live event even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all that fluff, so you only have incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. Use the app. There's lots of great features. You get the super deal. You get to see your seat before you buy it, exactly what you'll be looking at is if you were sitting there, they've got their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. Uh, so check out Game Time. They have the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Final segment here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, previewing the prospects challenge for the Sabres. They'll play the Blue Jackets on Friday night, just after seven o'clock. So let's get to the defenseman to watch for in this tournament. Not named Ryan Johnson because he's a first round pick. And I cut, you know, I saw a, a great joke from Chris Ostrander today of two in the box who was replying to, I think the Islanders on their rookie mini, their rookie camp roster have uh, Keith Kincaid, who's 35 years old and has played in the NHL like for a decade. 
I don't even know how they're allowed to do that, but I guess these things are just kind of made up by the team, so maybe they can do whatever they want. Um, and the joke was basically, it's like, good, there's a precedent for Ryan Johnson going to his 16th uh, rookie prospects challenge in the year 2038. Uh, feels like Ryan Johnson's been going to these forever. The other defenseman to keep an eye on, the name we've been mentioning here and there throughout the last year or two that keeps coming up. I keep getting questions about him. I, I ask... The prospect guys I know that are watching the Amherst more than I am about him. How does the question I'm asking them and the question I'm getting, how does Nikita Novikov look? This is a defenseman that is kind of got people's attention. And he did show up to the AHL last year and impress. He looked good. He looked raw, right? There were some things to clean up, no doubt. But you got a a young 20-year-old defenseman that went and played good minutes for the Amherst, a lot of times in a top four role, 23 points in 65 games. All right, like the guy is not even thought to have been like, oh, this is an offensive defenseman. More of a stay-at-home, physical, defensive guy, shutdown role. But I got some points there too for a guy that just showed up in the AHL. So Novikov looks like he impressed a lot when he got to Rochester, taking up a lot of space, blocking lanes um you know there there's a, a feeling pressure in the little bit i watched him i was impressed by a 20 year old playing in a men's league in the ahl playing in north america where it could be a tough transition right you play over in europe your whole life bigger ice then you come over to north america play in the ahl against men that could be a tough transition for a young european kid that might not hardly even know the, the language i actually don't know that um how well he speaks english at this point i haven't heard him talk uh, so maybe that part isn't even true. So not worth mentioning. Um, but tough transition for these guys, for these kids. And it seemed like he doesn't feel pressure when he's got the puck. When he's got a guy draped on him again, I'm watching more limited. Maybe there's more evidence that he was a little more frantic during the season. But in the couple of games that I watched of him, the playoff games and a few regular season games, he's got the puck on his stick and there's a guy near him, like right next to him, hounding him. And it looked like he was making the right decision a lot and didn't feel rattled by the fact that somebody was pressing on him. And that's a good trait. If you're going to be a defensive defenseman in the NHL, you got to be able to do that. If you're not going to give anything in the offensive zone, which by the way, again, Novikov might be able to, but if you're not going to give anything in the offensive zone, I need you to be able to take the puck from the opponent, stop them from coming into the offensive zone in the first place. And when you have the puck in your own end, I need you to be able to feel pressure and get it up to your teammates in the neutral zone. And I think Novikov shows the ability to do that. I think right now, looking at Nikita Novikov, who when he was drafted, it was said about him, this kid would have went higher if people didn't think he was staying in Europe. Maybe there was more of a thought to him staying in Europe even than like a Poltapov. That was the concern. I read about him several times. This would be a second or third round pick if people thought he was coming over. He goes in round six. So to me, the talent was always higher than the draft status in the first place. Now it's starting to look like, oh yeah, this guy would have been a second round pick. So Novikov, right now I, I was building up to the take and I didn't even get there. I think I'd want to guess right now he's going to be an NHL player. He is going to be a defenseman on the Buffalo Sabres. This is a guy to watch because I think I think he's coming. I think we are just kind of waiting. And I wonder if even this year is too early. If he has a good first half of the year with the Amherst and looks mature and looks like he's bigger and stronger. He gained about five pounds in the offseason, according to the Sabres uh, roster from last year. So if he looks bigger, more mature, you know, and they throw him out there for a game and it looks pretty good, like halfway through, then maybe this is somebody that is going to play on the Sabres for, uh, for years. And then finally, the last prospect to get to on today's show, under the radar prospect for the Sabres Prospect Challenge, is a first name that I'm probably going to butcher, but we're still trying to figure out what, what Isaac Roseanne's name is, pronounced nationwide, so we're still figuring all this out. But former fifth-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres, 2022 NHL draft, first name I'm only going to pronounce it once, Sivalad Kamarov, I believe is how you pronounce it, Silent V. I think, at the beginning. Komarov is a right-shot defenseman. Hallelujah! A right-shot defenseman in the Sabres organization. I mean, it's like a it's like a meteor going across the sky. Like, you don't even... It's so rare. Um, 
Fifth round pick of the Buffalo Sabres has had a nice little development track in the last couple of seasons. Last year in Drummondville of the QMJHL, he had 50 points in 38 games and then followed it up with 15 points in 19 games. A, a nice, especially offensive season from taller kid, six foot three, 20 years old. This is another Russian prospect, by the way, that the Sabres drafted from a couple of years ago. Um, skating, you know, I, the, I was reading about his uh, profile at Elite Prospects. Used a give and go to activate off the point. A couple of crafty plays on breakouts, um, but does miss some opportunities when under pressure. So that's one thing you'll have to get better at. I just talked about it with how good Novikov might be at it. You got to get better when under pressure, but maybe a little more offensive upside with Komarov than some of the other defensemen in the Sabres prospect pool. Um, how dynamic does he look? How how much did he fill out, by the way? He is listed at 187 pounds on the roster that I am looking at. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm comparing and contrasting last year to this year. Last year, Komarov was listed at 187 pounds. This year, Komarov is listed at six foot four, 205 pounds. If that is accurate. If that's accurate, that's a that's a kid trying to become a professional hockey player in a big way by getting bigger like that. He's grown an inch from 6'3 to 6'4, and he's gone up from 187 to 205. That's a big number. So we'll keep an eye on him and what his development track is going to look like, but what does it look like in Rochester? That is going to be number 76 out there on the ice at the Prospects Channel. It's a little bit more of an offensive defenseman, but right shot. He is the... One right shot defenseman to focus on at this prospects challenge. If you're wondering like who is coming up in the prospect pool, Komarov is one that uh, could become someone to keep an eye on in the Sabres prospect pool. So, all right, that's going to do it for us though today. Enjoy the Sabres prospect challenge. Enjoy bills and dolphins too. We're gonna have a nice little weekend here when it comes to Buffalo sports tomorrow on the show, we'll get into Montreal and I think still the worst team in the Atlantic division and a team that, is trying to push forward, but I still think is behind the Sabres. We'll get to Montreal. We'll get to some more news items. Uh, if we didn't have anything to talk about prospects challenge-wise, if you got any questions about prospects we did not mention today on the show, hit me up, and I'll look into them a little bit if I don't know a lot about them already, and I'll try to get you the scoop on all the guys that are coming up in the Sabres prospect pool. That'll do it for us. Be sure to check out our text line, joinsubtext.com slash Sabres if you want to sign up. Thanks for listening to the Lockdown Sabres podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.